Okay, let's do a two-sample t-interval example. This is a book problem about commuting. Someone wonders uh, if root a or root b uh, is better, and if it's if the difference is significant. And so what they what he does is he flips a coin each day out of forty days to figure out um, what uh, where to go, and he ends up with twenty trips on root a and twenty trips on root b. Um, interesting, that's the same number. Um, I guess he could have made sure it was the same and then flipped a coin somehow. But anyway, he's randomly deciding each day um, which route to take. And he ends up with 20 trips on each. On route A, the mean time he gets is 40 minutes with a standard deviation of 3 minutes. Oops, should I put minutes there? And on route B, 43 minutes with a standard deviation. It's a little bit smaller, 2 minutes. So it seems like there's a difference. The question is, how significant is that difference? Uh, can we put a confidence interval on that? So let's get a 95% confidence interval for the difference in the means. And so this is a, where the, this, the two sample t interval is. It's really about the difference in the means. And it's only going to make sense if these are two independently got samples. We're going to talk about the other extreme of a paired, uh, paired testing and paired intervals in the next section, the next chapter. But here we want them to be independent. Well, he flipped the coin to determine the root. Um, which is great. That's good randomization, better than you'd usually see in this kind of situation. So it's random, and that should also mean that these uh, these groups are independent. It shouldn't be that just because he had a really good day on root A on one day, then he's going to have a really good day um, the next day, especially if he's randomizing which route he's taking. So that's good. It's also very important is in the problem we're told that if you actually do the histograms, they don't show it to us, if you do the histograms of these times, the individual times, they look unimodal and symmetric. Now notice the ends are about are at 20 and total 40, but the individual ends are 20. And so we do need to really know um, that they don't look too skewed or too bimodal or anything like that, but we're assured that that's okay. So that's the conditions to do a two sample t interval. They talk in the chapter, in the later part of the chapter, about the idea of pooling and pooling t tests and stuff like that. We're just not going to do that. It's something that you can do. They tend not to recommend it. It's not crucial, but they say it's never wrong not to pool in this kind of scenario. And so we're not going to pool it. It's just it's too complicated anyway. Okay, so if we want to do this by hand, well, we can kind of do it by hand, but it gets a real, a rather messy. And I'm going to show you a quick way on the calculator later. But we want to make sure to know uh, roughly what the calculator is doing. We still need the standard error. We need to know um, if I was going to do these samples over and over again, if I did many samples of 20 trips each, and I took a look at the difference in the two means, okay, it looks like it's three minutes, right, or minus three, I guess, in this order. Well, how much is that likely to vary? It has to do with how much the SAs were varying, how much the SBs were varying, because those gives us our rough and ready estimates of the true variance if we did millions of trips on each route. And then it's something about dividing by root n, but whenever you have two things, you have to combine them with the Pythagorean theorem. And so you get the square root of the sum of the squares kind of phenomenon. We've seen this before. And so the standard error turns out to be 0.8062. Now, always to get a margin of error, we multiply that by whatever the appropriate t star is. It used to be z star. For means, it's a t star. Um, and that comes from the 95% confidence interval. But it also comes from the degrees of freedom. And they talk about in the book how there's this ugly formula in a footnote. It's not ridiculously ugly. But it's kind of messy and not something you want to have to do by hand. Um, and it turns out that that gives you 33.1. And I'll show you a quicker way, an easier way to do that in a second. Okay, but the main thing is that this is—it's near 40. It's between 20 and 40. It's pretty much always going to be in between the sort of one sample size and the total sample size. Um, but to do it correctly, you want to actually use the right number. Okay, so now we've got that. Uh, we plug that into T star. Use a table or use a, a T um, calculator. The 33.1. If you're using the calculator, just go ahead and round. Okay. So you get about 2.03, as it turns out. All right, so our margin of error is 1.64. Let's do a reality check real quick. OK, that's predicting that if I took many, many samples um, I'm gonna of 20 trips each, I'm probably going to see a bunch of numbers centered around minus 3 with a variability of about 1 and a half minutes. OK, that's reasonable. It's a bit less than the individual variabilities, but not drastically less. That's what you should usually see, unless the sample size is really large, in which case it will be drastically less. So the effect of bundling things together in groups always reduces the variability, 
instead of something like three or two or even bigger because the variabilities will combine in this situation, um, we also get the effect of the, the one over root n factor and we get something that's pretty plausible. Okay, so we want to look at the difference of the two means. Okay, well, it's good. so the, the expected value is it's minus three. If you just looked at these two numbers and I said, quick, give me a guess, I'd say, uh, I think root a is three minutes shorter, I guess. But maybe that's just because of random variation. Okay, but in any case, this confidence interval is going to be centered at that, that naive guess. Okay, and then plus or minus the margin of error, 1.64. So, minus 4.64 to minus 1.36. So it looks like we have 95% confidence it is shorter. It really is a meaningful difference. It's something like between 1.5 and 4.5 and minutes short, uh, shorter than the other route. Okay. Now, I actually got, I want to show you the calculator way. In fact, I actually got the degrees of freedom out of the calculator. Okay. So if you go to um, stat tests down there at like 0 or something like that, it's two sample t interval. And this is one where I didn't have a data set. So here I'm entering the stats. So I make sure this says stats. And then I entered in. The mean of the first data set was 40. Its, sam its sample standard deviation was 3. And the n was 20. Mean of the second one was 43. Standard deviation 2. n2 was 20. Okay. Then that continues. This is just the same screen continued. You then need to tell it the confidence level. I, it was 0.95 by, by default. I just left it there. I, this was no by default, and I left it there. I'm not going to pool, and I'm not going to do any examples of pooling. And then I just went down to calculate and press calculate. And voila. It gives us the interval, exactly as advertised by the by hand method. And for, for good measure, it says, you know, you probably want to know that degrees of freedom. In case you wanted to check this by hand, here's the degrees of freedom. I calculated 33.1. Okay. And then it just reports basically the same kinds of summary statistics to make sure they're on the same page. Okay, very straightforward. You just need to put in your mean standard deviations and ends for the two samples. Make sure you got your confidence level right. Say no to pooled, and you're done. Okay, really quite straightforward. The main thing is that uh, two main things are we're trying to, we're really interested in the differences here. The, that's why this is a small number like the minus three. Okay, and it's just uh, it's nice to have some sort of reality check in case you make enter the numbers in wrong. The variability should be. You start out by having a variability that's bigger than either 3 and 2 because of the idea that variability adds when you have two sources of it, but then reduced by the 1 over root 20, and so it ends up being actually a bit smaller than 2, but not drastically smaller. And that sort of informs the whole, the whole rest of the calculation. Okay, that's why this is, yeah, it's minus 3 plus or minus about 1.5. Okay.